really gave us a change in the missile, which changed uh, the fuse so we had a faster acting warhead. It changed the spray pattern of the warhead, and it also changed the software in the system. And one of the things that allows the Patriot system to uh, be adaptable uh, so quickly to changing threat situations is the fact that it is a software-based system. Uh, much as uh, the, the user would uh, upgrade a computer at home by buying a new disk or tape uh, for software, we can actually change the operating parameters of the Patriot system by doing the same thing. Tactical ballistic missiles, called TBMs, are more difficult to shoot down than aircraft. Their flight paths are very different from those of aircraft. So the computers in the Patriot control stations needed new software to change the way they scan the sky for targets. It's an entirely different uh, target set you're looking at. Uh, first of all, even today's modern fighter aircraft are fairly big with a wide wingspan which gives you a relatively large radar cross-section. Uh, the missiles, of course, are much smaller. They're harder to find in the sky and harder to, uh, to track once you do find them. Uh, but the biggest thing is that it gives us uh, difficulty because of the speed of the target. Uh, instead of dealing with an aircraft that we can see at long range, and have several minutes to decide if it's a friendly aircraft or a hostile aircraft to warn other uh, people in the area and to take all the type of tactical action we do against an aircraft threat, we're faced with very short reaction time against a small target uh, traveling exceedingly fast. And when we deal with the Patriot system, uh, when we fire the Patriot system at an incoming tactical ballistic missile, it's really like a bullet hit looking for a bullet. And we have closing velocities and much faster than you would find if you fired uh, two 30 caliber rifle bullets at each other. In the PAC-2 upgrade, not only did the computer software have to be changed, but the missile warhead had to be changed as well. Well, primarily the warhead had to be, had to be changed. The fragments in a, in a PAC-1 warhead are fairly small because, uh, as, as you can imagine, when we when uh, a, a warhead is exploded near a, a, an aircraft, uh, we don't need very large fragments to be able to, to make that aircraft go out of control or, or to, de to destroy it. It's a different story, though, when we're talking about a TBM warhead, a tactical, tactical ballistic missile warhead, uh, that it has probably a, a lot thicker skin. Uh, the warhead itself is, is, in, is in steel. Uh, so that the fragments have to be larger and they have, to, uh, uh, they have to be propelled towards the target at a faster velocity. In the late summer of 1990, the U.S. Army's Air Defense Center at Fort Bliss began deploying Patriot batteries of the 11th Air Defense Brigade to Saudi Arabia as part of Desert Shield. An Iraqi air attack into Saudi Arabia would have been nearly suicidal with the Patriots present. So Saddam Hussein was more likely to use his modified Scud missiles instead. The PAC-2 upgrade was not even completed when the Patriots arrived in Saudi Arabia. The system uh, had not had that capability uh, for very long. We deployed from Fort Bliss in August uh, we took the Army's entire inventory of Pac-2 missiles with us, and that was a total of three. Uh, we had soldiers with uh, their hands on new software that we had not had a chance to train on before. In fact, the Army was scheduled to do a user test of the, uh, the Pac-2 software here at Fort Bliss uh, that very summer. We ended up doing that test in Saudi Arabia. None of my officers None of my non-commissioned officers and none of the soldiers in the brigade had ever fired a missile against a tactical ballistic missile before. Uh, so we were very proud of the training program uh, that we were able to put together and the results of that program uh, as Desert Storm evolved. On the night of the 18th of January, 1991, the Patriot system was put to the test. On the screens in the engagement stations appeared the new symbol the inverted triangle, meaning an enemy missile was inbound to targets in Israel and Saudi Arabia. 
To the amazement of many, the incoming Scud missiles were intercepted, the first time that ballistic missiles had been shot down in combat. Lieutenant Jeters was the first woman to command a Patriot battery to shoot down a Scud. So on this particular night, the, the Scud was in fact coming to Riyadh, the area that we were located in. Okay, so I'm like, okay folks, this is the real thing. So, you know, slightly different. I had been in the van before when we had got um, Scud launches or Scud alerts, as they were called. And um, at th this particular night, it was coming toward us. So, of course, you know, every, everything, everyone inside the van were, were tense and, um, you know, the adrenaline was pumping. So, um, you know, we just sat there and waited. Once the system was configured, we sat down and um, we just waited for the first TBM to show up. Being inside is rather frightening because you have no view of outside what's going on outside of you except for the screen, which you know, is radar showing you what's out in front of you. So, you know, we heard uh, Patriots going off, and you, know, you could hear the uh, whooshing sound, you know, the Patriots leaving the launchers, but we really had, you know, no idea of what, what was going on around us, you know, within our area. So we, when I looked on the screen and I saw the Patriot going up, I, looked, I told Lieutenant Jeter, I said, it's one, one away. And we watched it go up and we got a uh, confirmed kill on it. And while it crossed my mind, you know, to celebrate, we got it. Suddenly there was another one on the screen. And we engaged the second one. It got pretty hectic in the van. We were checking Camo and talking with the higher headquarters, trying to get messages down. Once we started the engagement, I was basically monitoring the party line and notifying my communication site what was going on. It was scary. I'd never been in a Patriot unit when they had fired and we fired multiple launches and the van rocked. It was a, a weird feeling to know it was real and what was really going on. The battle against the Scuds was complicated by unexpected developments. The Iraqis had modified their Scuds to extend their range, but this made them unstable. As they were re-entering the atmosphere, the modified scuds were breaking up into three or four pieces. A breakup occurred, first of all, as it came back in. Uh, we engaged on, on all those parts. Uh, the objective and the commander's intent was, is if it's coming in, we take it out. So there was uh, a lot of extra effort dedicated to tanking out not only warhead sections, but tankage that also occurred because of breakup. Okay, this is a uh, skin section from the Scud. Now you can see at this point here is where the Patriot pellet penetrated the uh, surface itself, and here's one of the pellet sizes that uh, does all the damage. On occasion, the debris from these disintegrations fell to earth at high speed, causing damage in Saudi Arabia and Israel. But what was remarkable was the very high percentage of hits scored by the Patriot and the surprisingly few casualties caused by the Scuds. Now we talk a lot about the outstanding capabilities of the Patriot system, and it's a great system. Uh, we got super support out of the Raytheon Corporation, and, uh, and we uh, were very pleased with the overall results. But it wasn't just the system, it was the soldiers. The soldiers are what made it work. And uh, I'll tell you that the, uh, the victory in the sands of Saudi Arabia over there started in the sands of the desert out here at Fort Bliss, where we train our soldiers and our Patriot battalions here. New programs are underway to further improve the Patriot's capability against missiles, and new anti-missile systems are on the drawing board. But in the history of military technology, Patriot will long be remembered as the first to win the battle of missile versus missile.